You know what? Hey, if we're going to talk about workstation grade hardware, why don't we talk about Intel's entry, or I should say re entry to the workstation market? It's not that you couldn't buy a workstation chip from Intel, you just couldn't buy a sensible one until now. They've launched their fourth generation Xeon W3400 and 2400 series processors, codenamed Sapphire Rapids, and these are looking a lot more exciting than what the. Uh, Hmm, hold on. Have they launched the server chips yet? While you look for that, someone actually said a really interesting video idea. Um, uh, Shattered Sky said, we need a video about the total amount spent on parts for PCs used for random things in the office. Someone going around and just totaling the IT spend, assuming you had to buy everything new in the office, would actually just be wild. Yeah. I don't think it's a video we could do, though. Um, I've noticed there's just a lot of... Anytime I talk about money, uh, like we... like we, Yeah, we had a, a short circuit video a little while ago where I forget what it was. It was like a game console or like something. It was like hundreds of dollars. And I was like, that's a lot of money. And the comments are full of people being like, uh, 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 not for you, tech, CEO, media, elite, whatever. And I'm kind of uh, sitting yes. here going, okay. Um, and then... You know, you'll and then on the on the other end of the spectrum, you'll go. Okay, this is it, like a used motherboard CPU RAM combo for seventy five bucks. That's not a lot of money, and people will go. Well, I'm actually for for, for uh, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. So it's like okay, 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 okay. So if there's basically no sort of way that we can agree on what is or isn't a lot of money, because you might not agree from your own perspective, or you might not think that what I'm saying should be valid from my own perspective. The new policy with the writing team that I've kind of outlined is we just cannot talk about money Opinions in anything other than objective terms. Yep. Yeah, in yeah. subjective terms, money talk is, is banned. So you can still talk about performance per dollar. Yeah. And part of that is part of that comes from, um, I don't think necessarily with the WAN show audience, but from a lot of people getting a, um, like a bad taste in their mouth when we do talk about how much things cost around here. Uh, and in a in a mainline video, I just don't I just don't think we would do it. Totaling up how much all my computers cost, I think, gets dangerously close to just like flexing content, at least in the eyes of a lot of people. And I don't I don't see it as something that we would that we would be able to to do without leaving a bad taste in some people's mouths. I would I would true. legitimately be interested in I'd, the answer. I'd be fine. I'd find it interesting. I would even want it yeah. filmed like pretty not in, 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 a, in a like not that sophisticated way i would just want to like have a handy cam following someone as they go up to each workstation with like a laptop and just like total the value and just keep going and you just see it like creep up throughout the video i think that would be cool floor plane chats blowing up they wanted to an exclusive. exclusive yeah too much work it would take a lot that would time. take five ever there's not so happening. many computers deployed in such a wide variety of ways like Every person who works here has a workstation. At least one. So it's over 100. Yeah. It's, it's not happening. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, right. So I was talking about Sapphire Rapids, and I wasn't sure if the embargo had lifted on the server chips. It looks like it has. So the workstation ones look a lot more impressive and exciting to me than the server ones did. And the reason for that is that we get some of the same benefits of the server chips. So nice high core counts. They're all performance cores, unlike Intel's mainstream chips, which have performance and efficiency cores in them for the last couple of generations. Uh, they are overclockable, which is super exciting. So this is kind of like a these workstation chips are kind of a spiritual successor to their old Core X series chips. Um, they have adequate PCIe lanes. Let's go. Yeah, they're okay. a lot. 64 Gen 5 lanes for the 2400 series, 112 lanes for the W3400 series. That's wild. And unlike Core X and unlike mainstream Threadrippers, so not Threadripper Pro, the mainstream Xeon 2400 line supports up to two terabytes of quad channel ECC memory. So that was a big limitation for Threadripper that made it not really suitable for many professional workloads is how little RAM you could install on the platform. Well, Intel's coming in and going, oh, sure, put in more RAM, I guess. And on the high-end ones, you can do four terabytes of eight channel ECC DDR5. 
Now, they don't have the same kinds of core counts as AMD. It only goes up to 20-something. Oh, it doesn't say. Darn it. Uh, main stream. Ah, main stream, stream skew table. Here we go. It only goes up to 24 cores on the mainstream lineup and 56 cores on the, the, the professional or what do they call it? Expert lineup. But these are fast cores. These are really fast cores, and I really like the pricing, particularly of the 2400 series. If what you needed was basically what Intel had, so, you know, anywhere from 16, 12, 10, 12, 16, 24 cores, which is enough for the vast majority of workloads, but you're just frustrated by the lack of memory bandwidth or to total memory capacity on those ma on like the consumer chips or particularly frustrated by the lack of PCIe lanes. lanes. Yes. Like we're the, at the first thing I thought when I saw these lists of specs was like that's a lot of lanes. Well, exactly, right? Yeah. Because mainstream platforms now are what 20 24 28 lanes. That's all you get. And when the expectation is that you're going to be using up 16 of them for your GPU, which yeah. makes sense, the second you go and think, oh, okay, well, I want to put a high-speed network card in here. Or that's a big part of the reason I did sign off on those Threadripper Pro ingest stations. You know why? F***ing lanes. lanes. Because as soon as USB you put high-speed, yeah. like, I think they have uh, 25 gig network cards in them so that we can ingest at high speed to the server. They have a bunch of USB uh, controller cards, the multi-controller ones. So that you can actually do more than just, okay, so if you put a 10 gig USB card in your system, it'll do 10 gig total. So if you have multiple devices plugged in, they all share that bandwidth and it's, it's not that staple. <laughs> Whereas you can get these multi-controller cards, so each port is on its own controller. So for something like an ingest station where we are ingesting hundreds of gigs or sometimes terabytes of media at a time off of a whole bunch of different sources, we need all those inputs and in order to get full bandwidth out of them and not have run into stability or just speed bottlenecks, well, you need more lanes. And it was the only freaking platform that made any sense at the time. Whereas now I would just go with this, Xeon yeah. W2400 series. And I don't even have to buy 32 cores or whatever. You can get one with as few as six cores for 400 bucks. And yeah, the motherboards will be expensive, but that's still a relatively affordable platform if all I need is some freaking... PCIe lanes. I love it. I'm excited about it. And I'm especially excited because I have been so frustrated by AMD's complete and utter lies. AMD lied. They said, hey, sorry about the first Threadripper platform. Um, you know, we I know we promised that you guys were going to have a long upgrade path on this, but we really had to change it for Threadripper 3000. We got to do this new TR, STRX, whatever it was. Uh, we need this new platform and we need this new socket. So you're not going to enjoy the same backwards and forwards compatibility that the mainstream saw on AM5, but we'll make it up to you. This is a long-term platform and you're going to get CPU upgrades. That was f***ing bullshit. They just didn't. And you know what is so that is most offensive about it? There are there are leaks of Threadripper non-pro 5000 chips engineering samples out there. They did the work. Yeah. They just decided you don't get it. Eh, forget it. Yeah. Eh, forget it. Those chips would have gone into this platform, but instead they went and they did Threadripper Pro. They made it Lenovo exclusive for however long. And it's like, yeah, I, I get it. The volumes of Threadripper compared to the, the money that they could make on, you know, making it only Threadripper Pro and selling through system integrators or whatever else might have made sense from a business standpoint, but they made a lot of enthusiasts angry with them, myself included. So I'm mad. <laughs> there you go. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited that... Uh, I'm just excited that Intel is is bringing the fight to them. Do I think that Xeon 2400 and 3400 series are going to take a bite out of AMD in this in this segment? <sighs> I, I doubt hugely. Not necessarily, yeah. especially because we know from Epic Genoa, so that's AMD's current server platform, 
that AMD can do 96, <laughs> 96 Zen 4 cores on a single chip. I mean, Threadripper has always just been mini epic, like cut, slightly cut down epic. So it's possible that they're going to bring out a Threadripper Pro later this year that's going to make Sapphire Rapids just look utterly stupid. But I still hope that this is Intel forcing them to respond and that we're going to see the fight heat up in this segment. Yeah. It's exciting. See, Gustavrish says Threadripper is kind of pointless. If you need server performance, you buy a server chip. You can use Windows with server chips. You don't get it. Server chips are not overclockable, for one thing. Server chips are designed for stability first, okay? They don't have the same kind of flexibility that something like a Threadripper did. And server platforms, perhaps more importantly, are not designed for desktop use. Like, Epic is an SOC. Epic is not a, uh, a, a, a CPU in the same way that other CPUs are. And the Epic platform is very different from the Threadripper platform. Did you ever notice, for example, that on Epic motherboards, there's no I.O.? Well, that's because it's an SOC. It doesn't have a chipset that it's attached to. Uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, Epic, the, at least the, the first three generations, had no support for onboard RAID. Did you know that even? Because there was no chipset. So. Makes sense. There's no chipset on the board. Whereas Threadripper supported things like AMD RAID, for example, which you might want in a workstation environment. It had proper support for more USB, for example. Uh, so it's it, that, spoken out of ignorance, saying that if you need that performance, you need... Lots of people do things that are desktop things and that are not uh, server things with many core chips. So, no, that is actually factually incorrect, what you said, and it is excellent that we are seeing um, a return. Uh, we're seeing better attentiveness to the workstation market and the enthusiast market. The other thing that Threadripper did that AMD won the hearts and minds of many enthusiasts with is it made many core CPUs affordable to people who otherwise couldn't access that hardware. People like students who were studying machine learning or machine vision or any other CPU intensive workload or were in a, a scientific program but couldn't afford a you know $5,000 Xeon CPU or whatever else. They could go and buy a Threadripper and yeah, it couldn't support as much memory or whatever, but they could overclock the snot out of it and they could at least run their workloads or people who are running home labs for example like yeah no i don't need full fat i don't need full fat epic for this because it's not going into production environment but this really allows me to evaluate the architecture or whatever else like ah oh. it was a it was a big it was a big loogie in the face of their most hardcore enthusiast users and it sucks yeah <laughs> 